So this talk is basically a post-mortem on a game I made, but it's also kind of a safe place for us to talk about games. So if you have any questions that uh, you're dying to ask, things that I haven't covered in here, I realised that I talked to all, uh, several people when I've been here, and uh, most of them have more experience than I do. So um, if that's you, I'm sorry, but some other people uh, maybe haven't made games, and that might be interesting to them. Um, so. Um, who am I? Um, I'm Ben Byford, um, that's my Twitter. Um, I do so many things, it's unbelievable, but um, I'm just going to list a few. Uh, I work uh, running events at Framework, which is a co-working space on King Street, so check that out. Uh, I have a podcast called the Machine Ethics Podcast. I'm actually talking at uh, Briz Tech on AI ethics in December, so if you're going to that, come check out my session there. Um, I make websites, I make apps, and I also make games, and I also teach people how to code. Cool. Um, so, but I'm by, mo by no means the best coder, ironically. Um, so, I made a game, I'm going to tell you about it. Um, for some reason it's off the side there, but it should say full colour tiles. So, um, this really quite uh, static page is a game that I made. Um, it's a puzzle game um, because I love puzzle games and um, I wanted to make something which was going to be the simplest thing that I could possibly make to learn to make games um, and demonstrate to people that I can make games and hopefully get hired to make games for people. Um, so this is the thing. I think I've got the video which may or may not work. Let's see. Oh no. Yeah, so we need the internet for that. Um, but maybe I can get that up and running. Um, so has anyone made games before? A few? Oh, not too many. So that's not too bad actually. Um, so, one of the things I realised after making uh, websites for 10 years, um, actually um, a bit less than that, is that I had all the prerequisite skills. Um, so, I had this childhood dream that um, I could make a game or make games and be part of that industry, but it was impossible. When you looked at it, it was kind of like a opaque thing. You had to be an amazing coder or designer or whatever, and that no way in hell was I going to be able to be a game designer. Um, I realised a couple of years ago, after doing uh, web design for many, many years, that actually I could code and I could design stuff, and therefore, why the hell not give it a go and see what happens? Um, so that's kind of what I did. Um, I think I'll get online now. Um, and it was a, it was a bit of a personal development thing. Um, through the process of uh, doing these challenges, I hopefully became a better programmer. You know, it's a very different departure from a lot of the web stuff I was doing. Um, and it was also um, a bit of a money maker, so I wanted to then move into games development and hopefully get paid to make games. Uh, my only f game that I've actually been paid to make was with Ardman Animation, which was actually a web game. Um, so I have done one so far, and this was then built in Unity, so it was a whole kind of thing of like learning Unity and making kind of more complex games. Um, so I'm just going to give that another go. Uh, 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 uh. Magic. Cool. <laughs> this, is, this is running off my phone, so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, there is music. Um, so I'm going to go into that as well. Um, I think you should just check it out, it'll be fine. <laughs> go look it up. It's on iOS, Android, um, oh, there you go. <coughs> um, I also released it on Steam. One of the great things about Unity is that it's cross-platform, so with a little bit of tweaking, it was focused at the mobile audience, but I could release it on uh, Mac and PC, Linux and um, Amazon Fire Tab. All sorts of weird devices. There you go. So it's a challenging little puzzle game, and it doesn't tell you anything about how to play it, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I recommend doing. So um, this is actually a really interesting thing that came out. Like no one reads the store page information. I've, so you, you direct them to the store page, and they go, "Oh, cool, that looks alright. I'll download it." 
And the only bit of information about the game and how to play it is on that store page. And pretty much no one reads that. And it, it boggles my mind. It's like, oh, well, if you just read the thing, then you would know. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing to know, isn't it? <laughs> um, why a game? Uh, I love games. Um, yeah, I kind of got into this. Uh, it's the smallest kind of idea that I could make. Um, does anyone know this game? Um, so this is The Witness. It's uh, Jonathan Blow. Uh, he's one of uh, the people who inspired, inspires me as a games developer. And you should check out The Witness. It's great. But um, this game sort of inspired how I think about making my games and about this specific game. And the idea is that you're, you're, you're trying to discover how to play the game through play, and that's very much how The Witness works, but also you're trying to make uh, puzzles which um, you have to, you hopefully solve and go Eureka at the end, basically. And I don't think my game does that like the whole time, or is anyway as good as this game, um, but I like the idea of that sort of design um, uh, ethos. Yeah. Uh, so why me? Because um, I wanted to do it, and um, <laughs> um, and it was a book, portfolio piece, art and animation, blah blah blah. Done that bit. Um, so I'm using Unity. If anyone asks me some specific questions about that afterwards, that, that's cool. Um, there's lots of other games engines out there. There's, there's uh, Game Maker. There's Godot, Unreal. There's Corona. There's just rolling it with your own stuff. Um, all sorts of different programming languages that you can use. Um, Unity actually is C sharp. Um, so from the web world, where you don't actually write proper programs apparently, um, it was nice to do some like... <laughs> so people keep telling me. Um, it was, yeah, JavaScript land. Um, it was nice to write some stuff which was uh, type sensitive and I could uh, learn how to properly throw around classes and all that sort of stuff. So that was interesting as a, a personal development thing. Um, I don't know if most of you will probably use some of this stuff, but I mean, uh, Trello and just making lists of things as I was going through development. So this is like a solo thing that I did on my own, in my own time. And somehow I made a game while also having a child, somehow in my own time, and paying the bills and stuff, and I still don't understand how I did this, because I'm trying to make a new game at the moment, and I, I don't know how I did that originally. <laughs> um, it's, it's mad. Um, and it's good to track your progress and having an idea of where you're going, basically. So I used um, lots of lists, uh, Trello, uh, I used an app called Clear, which is quite nice on your, um, on your phone, to, to help myself um, keep track of where I was going, but also other people collaborate with. Um, and I actually had a QA person who I work with um, at a few steps, so they could come in and they could give me uh, Trello um, notes about bugs that I had in my, in my app, and then I could look at them and I could move them around and that sort of stuff. Um, so I would definitely do that. Um, I don't think I have a slide, no. But I also... <laughs> Um, I also used uh, Photoshop, um, Illustrator, Premiere, um, all those th things, as well as using Unity's Games Engine. It's originally a designer, so I have kind of um, some s knowledge of those platforms. That was kind of fine. Uh, but all these things came together to produce the app. Um, as you can probably see, that the app isn't like amazingly um, visually complex. Um, so I'm hoping my next game is going to be a bit more kind of aesthetically pleasing. Um, but to give you an idea, um, my favourite thing about working in, in kind of these applications, these game engines that you can kind of throw things together, is that pretty much uh, it took me a year and a half to produce this in my own time. But in the first couple of weeks, I had something working on my phone, and it kind of was somewhat what I was trying to achieve. Um, which is pretty mad. So this is me like getting really excited about like having something on my phone that I made. <laughs> like, um, you know, websites are cool and everything, but I'm like, I made an app. Cool. Um, so that was really nice. <laughs> um, and you might ask what, I've, what I was doing for the rest of that time. <laughs> and 
So, like, this was maybe a couple of months into it. I had scoped out an idea, <clears throat> the smallest idea that I could think of, which was kind of like a somewhat novel idea, which, you know, I thought that maybe people could play and might be interested in. And then I started making it. I made, like, proof of concept, and it worked. And then I basically spent the rest of the time doing menus, UIs, animation, and game feel, um, uh, colours and sprites, music, testing and testing and testing, uh, promotion, uploading and making text and videos for the stores, uploading to the stores, working out how to upload to Steam, which is a ball ache, um, social media, going to expos, like just all this stuff, right? Um, so if you're going to do this, expect to do loads of stuff or have a team which can take some of that off you. Um, I would highly recommend that. Um, I used to work a, f a bit in the Games Hub and there are some people who are solo developers and there are some teams and what you'll find is the solo developers usually go off and use um, a PR agency or uh, a few friends to do these bits and bobs for them. Um, and uh, one of the other great things I did was I made uh, another, a level generator and this was a bit of a flight of fancy so um, when you get bored for a project you go oh I can maybe make another project on the side which is kind of somewhat related um, <laughs> why not because you're kind of like oh it's so I've been looking at the same thing for ages um, so I made a node.js JavaScript world um, level generator which produced some JSON which I could import into my game um, which automatically created shared loads of levels and they were all crap so that was a waste of time <laughs> um, so I had this point where I was like do I spend more time on the level generator to make the levels good or should I spend more time making handmade levels so I came to this compromise where I said to myself I don't think I'm going to be able to make really good levels at this level generator quickly so I'll just make loads and loads of crap levels, a couple of hundred crap levels, and I'll look at them in the game, and I will note down the ones which I like the look of, basically. So actually a lot of the levels in the game are inspired by the level generator. <laughs> um, so they're hand-picked and slightly altered to make sense, and you know some of them are harder, and, and shuffling them around is a bit of curata um, cur curatorial practice there. Um, so I think this was a success, but not in how I originally wanted it to go. Uh, and that's what it looks like. That's a level. Um, I know that's like 200 levels, sorry. My bad. Um, and that's what it looked like in-game. Um, so, surrounding yourself with great people is one of the things I found um, um, <laughs> in, in this whole process. Um, so. The Games Hub, um, I don't know if you know it, but um, they were super amazing at just being there and just being available to go and ask questions, silly questions about Unity specific things or who do you use for this or, you know, um, when you get bored, how do you tackle that, all sorts of questions like that. Um, one of the most amazing things that happened to me at um, the Games Hub, because I was there for a few months, is someone came over and was like, oh, let me have a look at your game. Um, I showed them the game and they were like, ooh, it's a bit sluggish, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> a bit like pissed off. I was like, this is, a, a, this is my baby, like this is amazing animation, what are you talking about? And he said, oh no, 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 no nothing about that. St stuck in two lines of code and I didn't realise that Unity doesn't default to, let's go as fast as it can go, it defaults to 30 frames. So we upped that to 60 frames, and it was smooth as butter. It was so much better, you know? It was like, oh yeah. It's like, oh, I've made a good game now. Um, so, so like these really simple things, um, I couldn't have achieved with um, isolating myself, basically. Um, my, my partner was able to um, do a lot of the colour uh, theory stuff on my game, so actually it's uh, usable for um, people who are hard of um, seeing, so it's got some colour stuff, um, so you should ideally be able to play it if you have a definite um, colour blindness. Um, uh, it also, s hopefully, it still looks attractive to play for normal people as well, or for people who maybe have somewhat normal sight. 
Um, I have a fantastic friend who's a musician, and they did all the sound on the game, so that's great. Um, so surround yourself by uh, with useful people, um, and if you can, pay them. Um, you know, that's always nice. Uh, I did pay some something. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I couldn't find anything good for this slide, so I don't. They're just playing poker. Um, I like poker, so that's fine. Um, the idea here is that I literally tested everywhere I went. So I had a build on my phone always, and I would just be in a cafe, and if I happened to um, say good morning to someone and they looked like they wanted to have a conversation, I'd go, would you like to play this mobile game I'm developing? And they'd go, I don't know, well, yeah. I guess, and then I'd force them to play it and they would hate me forever, but at least I got some good feedback. Um, I actually did this in the uh, watershed, in the cinema. Um, in, the cinema. in the cinema, just before the credits. <laughs> Mate, you were... <laughs> um, in cafes, um, all sorts of weird places, in the aquarium, talking to other parents. You, you just need to test it, basically, um, constantly, and uh, I think it kind of rhymes true with like different demogra uh, demographics, tell you different things, but also you don't know what bugs you're going to have until someone smashes it really fast or like um, doesn't understand how to interact with it, all these sorts of things which you, being very close to it, maybe don't see. Um, so this is quite an existential problem um, and this is one which you don't often get uh, from clients because you usually get a spec and you have an idea of how long things are going to take what you can achieve within that time. If you're on your own and you're making something which is personal um, and you have an idea of where it's going, but you have no idea how much content to make. No idea. I mean, this is what I felt. And you look at other mobile games like Two Dots, and there's thousands of levels. Like, there's literally over a thousand levels. You can scroll forever, and I don't think I've even reached the top. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like that's too many levels almost, you know, for my personal satisfaction on completing things, because I like completing things, I think that's almost too much content. So what is enough content? If anyone has an idea about that, then let me know. Um, so my game currently has 70 levels, and I feel like that's not quite enough content, but it's more than enough to feel like you're getting enough game for like an hour's play or two hours play, depending on how good you are. But, I mean, this is really one of those things that you, I just didn't um, anticipate having to deal with. Um, promotions of Ball Lake, don't do that. <laughs> um, so, in my, if I produce another game, um, personally, indie game, I will, at the end, or, you know, halfway through probably, in, endeavour to get someone else involved in, uh, in PR and marketing because it's not something that I'm hugely interested in, hugely skilled in, and it's something that is detrimental to you making money, so it's probably worth spending the time and effort to do well, right? Um, and yeah, so basically I didn't, did not do this well. Um, I've had mm, three or four hundred people download and play the game, um, which is nice, you know. But again, like how many people is enough people is another question. Um, um, and I could have done a better job with the website, I could have done a better job with social media and I could have started earlier to promote it. Um, these are things I've learned now uh, and I would hopefully endeavour to, to make a change going forward in my next um, games and stuff like that. Uh, and obviously if you're a company and you're kind of relying on this as your income, then the marketing is almost one of those um, half and half situations. Like, if you can't get it into the hands of people, then you, you shouldn't be making it. Like, there's no point making it in the first place. No one's going to play it. And it's really disheartening to get to that position where you're, you're literally pleading people to play your game. And you know that they'll enjoy it as well. Um, so, that's a real problem. And I don't think there's a really good solution to that either. But if you can work with good people who are excited and interested in doing that job for you, then um, hold on to those people. Basically. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is an expo I went to. That was good. In, um, so this was really fun because I got to have loads of people play my game for a day and it was kind of like testing. Um, but I had like 50 people come and sit and, and play it 
and some people found it ext extremely frustrating and, and um, hard to play and other people completed it within half an hour and that was awesome too. So um, if you're making things like this, um, sit down with people, like I said, with the testing and, and give it to people put it in their hands, I uh, really recommend this. Um, and obviously you also meet lots of other uh, people who are in the same sort of position as you trying to promote their games, uh, which is really nice. Um, so I launched my game. Um, I feel like I'm somewhat running out of steam, so I'm just going to fire through this and then you can ask me questions. Uh, I launched it on uh, Android and uh, iOS, and then I've since released it on Steam for Mac, Linux, and PC, and also on various tablets and stuff like that. Um, these, uh, in Unity, you get analytics for free, so you can kind of see. Um, how many people this week are engaging with it, how many people have downloaded it, how many people have completed it, and you can add your own custom um, analytics to any part of your game. So for me, that was how many people have got to the end, how many people have got 100%, and how many people have um, clicked on the more levels button. And that was really key for me. You know, the key thing post-launch was, am I going to spend any more time with this product and can I somehow measure whether it's useful to do that? Um, so the idea that people were clicking on more levels was a very specific thing that I could track and spur me into making more levels, making more money essentially out of this thing that I've made. Um, so I know exactly how many uh, presses that is, basically, and then that spurred me into making a few more levels and an update for the iPhone X, which kind of breaks the UI because it's got a stupid thing on it. Um, <laughs> you're probably having to deal with that all. Um, <coughs> so that was really interesting that you could do quite specific things with your and like that, or things that are important to you. Um, so some. Um, there's, there's slides missing from this um, after talking to Kyle about like games jams and stuff like that. But um, help with promotion, trying to understand what success means to you is very important. For this game, it was the success was making and releasing a game. It wasn't making the big bucks. For my next game, success for me equals making enough money to take me into a next game. Um, this game was specifically a learning and portfolio piece. Um, so having an understanding of um, what you're going to get out of it, really important to set expectations for yourself. Uh, everything takes uh, much longer, except for some things. Um, <laughs> so uh, everyone, t everyone always tells you that Apple take ages in um, like QAing your game and releasing it. Sometimes they don't, and it's just there, like instantly, and you're like, what? I have no time to tell people now because I've just, you know, it sometimes takes weeks and then it just takes um, a few hours. Um, uh, Android's a bastard because um, if you, <laughs> obviously, but for, <laughs> uh, but for other reasons, um, they have a pricing thing which I only found out after it was a problem where on iOS you can change the price at any time, but for um, the Play Store, if you have set a free app, you can't make it unfree at any point. So you have to then delete it and start again, and I'm just not prepared to do that. So the Android app hasn't received any updates. Sorry, everyone. But this is my time and money, right? Um, and uh, for my next game, I want to make something bigger, more polished, uh, more exciting, and hopefully make some money out of it. Um, and I think that's around about it. Yeah, so that's me. Um, my website, such. Check it out. Thanks.